Measures of inflation, the Consumer Price Index, the CPI, is down nearly 3% from this past summer's peak. But the Consumer Price Index, again, that main gauge of inflation, does not account for all of America. That's because it only measures the average prices that urban consumers pay for a basket of basic products. Rural Americans are left out from that data, and that's not a small number of people. 14% of Americans live in rural areas. That's 46 million people, and they're kind of left out of this calculation. So some economists say that rural America is being totally left out of the equation, even though people living there are likely to suffer more from rising prices. Joining us now for a closer look at how inflation is impacting rural America is an economist, Melissa Armo. Thank you for joining us. And my first question is, why? Why would you leave 46 million people out of a pretty basic calculation of how life is going? I don't know why they're doing that, because again, it's a lot of people, and we have more and more people that have moved to rural America since COVID. So it's about 14% of the population. I think everyone should be counted, quite frankly. I think this adjustment was made a very long time ago, and they've never changed it. But when you look at rural Americans, and you even look at people that live in large cities, everyone right now is being affected by, are affected by inflation. And I think the problem is that people that live in rural communities, it costs them more gas to get to the grocery store. It takes them longer to get there. It costs them more to heat their homes and cool their homes. And so I think it really has affected people living in rural America a lot more than uh, the average person. Yeah, if your grocery store is an hour away and gas is $4 a gallon, where does that leave you every time you need basic goods? Um, is that where rural folks in America are struggling the most is with fuel and grocery prices or where are rural Americans being impacted by inflation, I guess I should ask. <laughs> But really, it is gas prices. Gas prices, really, how do people get to work? I mean, when you think about it, you're driving not just to get groceries, to get to work, to get everywhere. If you live an hour, or in some of these cases, some people live two hours away from their jobs, it can take a long time. And then, of course, you add that on to the cost of your gas back and forth to work and home every day, it really can impact people. I think the cost of diesel, fuel, and gasoline that has gone up in the last two years, really, not just this year, but even going back from 2021, has affected people. And even though the cost of gas has gone down, I'd say the last since last summer, it's still way higher than it was two years ago. And the problem with the number that we just got yesterday is that we're seeing it tick up. So mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to be a lot much relief for people. So people keep saying this is going to end, this is going to end. And, you know, and it's not ending. And I think people need to budget accordingly. And, you know, with the way things are right now, people can work from home. So people live far away from the city and it takes them a while to get there. They may want to think about taking a, a at work from home job. Sure. Uh, that's Melissa Armo. She's an economist. Again, 14 million people just basically don't count when it comes to measuring inflation. 14%, 46 million. Sorry about that. All right. Thank you. Thank Coming you. up, we're celebrating.